Obama is warning an operation against Islamic militants in Syria will be a long one. American forces and five Arab allies have carried out more airstrikes on the country. They're going after Islamic State along with another group they consider an imminent threat. NHK World's Craig Dale has details. Ships fired off a flurry of missiles from the Red Sea and Arabian Gulf. And fighter jets took to the skies to drop bomb after bomb on Syria. The damage on the ground was evident. Syrian anti-government activists say dozens of militants with the Islamic State were killed. Military leaders in Washington say attacks by the U.S. and five Arab allies focused on Raqqa, Hasaka, Deir al-Zor and Abu Kamal. They say they hit Islamic State command centers, equipment and training camps. Separately, U.S. forces attacked Aleppo, the stronghold of an al-Qaeda-linked faction known as the Khorasan Group. The intelligence reports indicated that the Khorasan Group was in the final stages of plans to execute major attacks against Western targets and potentially the U.S. homeland. U.S. warplanes and drones started hitting Islamic State positions in Iraq at the beginning of August. But President Barack Obama held off on attacking Syria, where a civil war has been grinding on for more than three years. He's been wary of helping President Bashar al-Assad in his fight against anti-government forces. He blames Assad for carrying out chemical weapons attacks and other atrocities. But Obama decided the benefits outweighed the risks, and he assembled a coalition of more than 50 nations to join the fight. This is not going to be something that is quick, and it's not something that's going to be easy. U.S. officials warned the Assad regime before the operation began. Syrian authorities didn't criticize the action, but said they support international efforts against terrorism, provided their country's sovereignty isn't affected. Western leaders say they have no choice but to go after Islamic State, regardless of borders. It has oil, it has money, it has territory, it has weapons, and there's no doubt in my mind it has already undertaken and is planning further plots in Europe and elsewhere. Questions remain, though, about whether this operation adheres to international law. Russian leaders say it doesn't, as do those in Iran. But most others agree the action is legal, provided the coalition exercises restraint. Avoid and minimize the civilian casualties. The focus now is what comes next. Some say ground forces are needed to capitalize on the gains made against Islamic State, also known as ISIS. If you're going to defeat a group like ISIS, you're going to have to defeat them on the ground as well as through air power. President Obama, though, has ruled out a ground combat role for American soldiers. So it would be up to other nations, specifically those in the region, to take on that responsibility. They all agree Islamic State and other radical groups pose a serious threat, especially because they've recruited thousands of foreign fighters. The militants have killed, raped and terrorized civilians as they swallowed up more territory. Authorities in the U.S. and elsewhere are on alert for attacks at home. It's a multi-layered problem that isn't expected to take months to solve, but years. Craig Dale, NHK World. Japan's Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi have been discussing the threat posed by Islamic State. The leaders met in New York on Tuesday. Abe spoke about the airstrikes in Syria. He said he believes they're designed to prevent the situation from worsening. He said he hopes the attacks will weaken the group and lead to its destruction. Sisi said he supports the international effort to tackle the problem. And he said comprehensive economic and educational assistance are also important in fighting terrorism. World leaders are vowing to cap greenhouse gas emissions and to do more to take care of the planet. They've gathered in New York to attend the UN General Assembly, and they're pledging billions of dollars to fight climate change at a one-day summit on the issue. Organizers touted the event as the largest gathering ever on climate change. More than 120 world leaders attended. The summit opened with a call for action by a woman from the Marshall Islands. She says her Pacific homeland is in danger of vanishing in the sea due to climate change. 
U.S. President Barack Obama and Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe have both promised to work to ease the burden on the Earth's environment. We can only succeed in combating climate change if we are joined in this effort by every nation, developed and developing alike. Nobody gets a pass. Ladies and gentlemen, global warming is unequivocal. Let us take actions today. I will introduce Japan's new actions for the sake of the cool earth. The keys are assistance of developing countries, technological innovation, and its diffusion and contribution to the international framework. Government and business leaders announced a plan to commit more than $200 billion, including pledges to capitalize the climate fund by the end 2015. That's when countries are supposed to finalize a new universal climate agreement. U.S. health authorities are warning about the spread of the Ebola outbreak in West Africa. They say the number of people infected by the virus could reach 1.4 million. Researchers with the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention conducted a simulation of how the disease might spread in Liberia and Sierra Leone. They say the number of patients will double every 20 days. They cited World Health Organization figures as saying 4,800 people are now infected. They say that number could rise to 8,000 by the end of the month. But researchers say the number of actual cases may be 2.5 times higher than the reported figure. And it could reach as many as 1.4 million by the end of January. CDC Director Thomas Frieden said doctors may be able to get the epidemic under control by then. But he said 70% of patients will need to receive appropriate treatment. Japanese doctors say they've broken new ground in surgery and it could prove life-saving for children. They've taken part of a mother's lung and implanted it into her two-year-old son. Doctors at Okayama University Hospital say the boy developed acute pneumonia in April. By August, he was unable to get enough oxygen even on a respirator and needed transplants for both lungs. An adult lung would be too large, so surgeons took the lower lobe of the mother's left lung. They divided it into the smallest unit that could still function. Doctors say they performed the transplant at the end of August. They say the boy is now breathing on his own. Even now in Japan, there are no organ donations small enough for infants. So this technique will open the door for infants to get organ transplants. The doctors say the transplant is the first in the world involving such small lung units. They say the boy is the youngest person in Japan to receive a new lung. Police in western Japan have made a grim discovery. They found the remains of a six-year-old girl who disappeared almost two weeks ago. Authorities have arrested a suspect in the case. NHK World's Tomoko Kamata has the story. Mirai Ikuta had me missing since September 11th. Police in Kobe City deployed hundreds of officers to look for her. Investigators found her body on Tuesday. Her remains had been cut into pieces and stuffed into bags. The bags were found in a wooded area just 150 meters from her home. People who live in the area almost never go there because the trees are so thick. Mirai left school with a friend on the day she disappeared. She returned home and then went out again. We had plans to play together, but she wasn't at home when I got there. Mirai was spotted on a security camera at a convenience store at around 3.15 p.m. Witnesses say they saw her walking alone 700 meters from her home at around 5.30 p.m. That's the last report of anyone seeing her. 
Investigators have arrested a suspect. His name is Yasuhiko Kimino. He's 47 years old and lives in the same neighborhood. One of his ID cards was found with the remains. Police have arrested him for abandoning Mirei's body. The case has sent a chill through the community. Some parents are afraid to let their children walk to school alone. I'm so worried. My child is worried too. Our children are getting scared. We hope the case can be resolved as soon as possible. Crimes against children have caused Japanese people to feel that their communities are no longer safe. And Mile's case is no exception. Tomoko Kamata, NHK World. Japanese figure skater Yuzuru Hanyu was hoping to make his season debut next month in Finland. But a back injury has forced him to pull out of the event. Hanyu won a gold medal at this year's Sochi Olympics. Officials with the Japan Skating Federation said Hanyu felt back pain during a practice session. His doctor said he needs four weeks of treatment. Hanyu had to cancel his appearance at the Finlandia Trophy. He would have in his first event of the 2014 to 2015 season. He's the two-time defending champion at the event. Federation officials said the injury doesn't seem too serious. Hanyu wants to recover in time for the Grand Prix in Shanghai in November. In February, he became the first.